So I want to tell you uh, something that may seem basic, but it's something that a lot of people struggle with, and that's the deity of Christ. What I'm saying is this. We live in a time where many people, they believe in Jesus. They believe that they believe in him like Abraham Lincoln, though. They just believe he was a good person or a prophet, somebody that had good sayings, but they don't believe him as the only begotten Son of God. And the problem is, you must believe this. You must have saving faith. The Bible doesn't call us to have blind faith, but saving faith. And you need to understand the concept of the Trinity, that God, the Holy Spirit, and the Father, they're all one, but they're also separate. And this is hard for our carnal mind to understand, but the Holy Spirit will open your eyes of understanding. You need to understand that Christ was there from the beginning, that, that Jesus was fully God and fully man at the same time. And he had to do that because man had fallen. And man, and, and man, and man had to have a sacrifice because see, God is a, is a holy and perfect judge. And, and he demands the proper sacrifice. But man cannot give that proper sacrifice, so he sent himself in the form of man. And no, it wasn't God's will or his, you know, his thoughts. It was physically Christ. The Holy Spirit came upon the Virgin Mary and they can, and conceived a sinless, perfect human being. That had to happen because all human, after the fall of Adam, they were born into sin and iniquity. That they already were born corrupted. This is why he had to send himself because he knew we couldn't save ourselves. The Bible says that if fulfilling the law, if following the law produced salvation, then Christ died for nothing. He had a mission from God to do this. And Jesus even himself, he claimed to be God. And it's funny that these, uh, these other religions, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, they, they regard Jesus as a person. They just don't regard him as the only begotten son of God. And this is the main thing that this is what that the devil loves to trap people with this. You say the word God, you know, the word God is used so loosely. You know, you say God, nobody bats an eye. But if you say the name Jesus, for some reason, it stirs people up. The Bible says that even the demons believe and tremble. The demons believe, but why don't we believe? Why can't we believe that he's the that he's the only begotten Son of God? Nobody like him. There's all these false doctrines coming in saying that you are Christ, you are you that you are a God too. No, no one is like Christ. No one could do what he did. But I'm just gonna let the word speak for for itself, and I just pray the Holy Spirit opens your eyes of understanding. So, the question: Did Jesus claim to be God? Absolutely. John 8, 58 says, Jesus replied, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. And this is what made people mad because when he said, I am, he was talking about the one who is. He was talking about the Lord. He's talking about Yahweh. That what he's saying is he's the God that brought you, that brought them out of Egypt because they were talking. He was talking about how he had seen Abraham and Abraham rejoiced when he saw him. And this was making the people mad because because. He was saying that he was God. He was, but it was making them it was making them furious. They're saying it was blasphemy. He needed to be needed to be outright stoned. But I but I want to show you in Scripture where Jesus confirms this, and how even the Scripture confirms that that he was fully God and fully man at the same time. It's hard for our carnal mind to understand, and this is why the Holy Spirit has to open your eyes of understanding. But he was fully God and fully man at the same time. John ten thirty says, "I am I and the Father are one." In essence and in nature, they are one. It's funny. There's so many type. There's so many shadows and types of Christ, even in, even even from the burning bush. And I'll get to that in a second. How the Trinity was there. The voice was the Father. The fire was the Holy Spirit, and and the bush that did not burn was the Son. John 14:9 says this. Jesus said to him, "Have I been with you for so long a time, and you have, and you do not know me yet, Philip? Nor recognize clearly who I am." Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? But let's see what it, what it says in Philippians. Paul's writing to the Philippians. It says this, verse chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. Who, although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God, as one with him, possessing the fullness of all divine attributes, the entire nature of deity, he did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped or asserted, as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it. But he emptied himself without renouncing or diminishing his, his deity. This is what Jesus did. But only temporarily giving up the outward expression of divine equality to his rightful dignity. 
by assuming the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men, he became completely human but was without sin, being fully God and fully man. After he was found in the terms of his outward appearance as a man, for a divinely appointed time he humbled himself still further by becoming obedient to the Father to the point of death even on the cross. And I need to preface that, I need to let you know real quick that Jesus was not a martyr. He was not forced to die. He said, I put my lay, I lay my life down and I can pick it up. That he did this just because he, he, he loved us that he had such a great love for us, that he voluntarily died to, to, be, to, to be a propitiation for our sins, to be a substitute for us. But I want to show you how even in the Old Testament how, how, and in the New Testament, how Jesus is God. So John 8, 58 says, before Abraham was, I am. Micah 5, 2 says, but as for you, Bethlehem, Ephrath, too little to be among the clans of Judah, for you, from you, one, capital O, shall come forth for me, who is to be the ruler in Israel. His, go his goings forth, his appearances are from long ago, from the ancient days. And ancient days, in the Hebrew, it means eternity. So I want you to look at that, Micah 5.2. I'm going to give you a lot of scripture. You can unpack it when you're done with this video. John 17, five says, now father glorify me together with yourself, showing that they're together but separate, with the glory and majesty that I had with you before the world existed. Understand that, that they had the glory before the world existed. Revelation 22, 13 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. This is Jesus talking, the first and the last. Fully God and fully man. I want you to understand that. And it's it's hard for the carnal mind to understand, but I want you to bear with me. Exodus 3.14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. It says, God said to Moses, I am who I am. You shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. And I am who I am relates to the name of God, Yahweh. It's rendered Lord, which is derived from Hayah, to be. Understand this, that but the Bible even says that he knows that, that he knows the beginning from the end. The end from the beginning is what he knows. He knows the, the end from the beginning, that this is Christ. Isaiah 43, 13, even from eternity, I am he. And there is no one who can rescue from my hand. I act, who can, revoke, who can revoke or reverse it? And this is why it says, no one can rescue you from my hand. That's why he had to send himself. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning, before all time, was the Word, and that's Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God Himself. And this phrase, God, appears first in the Greek word order, emphasizing the fact that the Word, Christ, was God. So God Himself, see, God Himself stepped into the flesh. John 17, 24, I have given to them your word, the message you gave me, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world and do not belong to the world, just as I am not of the world and I do not belong to it. This is Jesus saying. So he's in, he's in human likeness, but he says, I'm not of the world and I do not belong to it. Colossians 1.17, it says, And he himself existed and is before all things, and in him all things hold together. His is the controlling, cohesive force of the universe. Revelation 1.18, And the ever-living one, living in and beyond all time and space, I died, but see, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of absolute control and victory over death and Hades, the realm of the dead. So understand that he says, I died, but see, I am alive evermore. Understand this. Why is this important to know though? Because it is a fundamental part of the Christian faith. If you do not believe in the virgin birth, the blood atonement, the deity of Christ, the second coming of Christ, and the inerrancy of Scripture. You cannot call yourself a Christian. A Christian is to be a learned follower. It's to be Christ-like. Jesus made it very clear that He is the door, and that He's the only way, the real truth, and the real life. And no one can come to the Father except through Him. There is only one way to be saved, and you're only saved under one name, and that is Jesus Christ. There is no alternative. Why did He come to earth to begin with? He didn't have to do it. He wasn't for himself. 
He did it for us. He did it because he loved us so. He said that you were to die for. That's how much he loves you. He became the son of man so that we could be called sons of God. He gave what belonged to him, and that's righteousness, and took what belonged to us, damnation. This is why we preach the gospel. This is why it's the good news. This is why we love others, because he showed us a love so great. See, God is a relational God, and he desired true relationship with his children from the beginning. But after the fall of man, you are not, you're no longer a child of God. You're, you're, you, you're, you're, born, you're born after Adam. There's been a ha-adam, in the Hebrew, that's direct descendants of God, and there's been a ha-adam, direct descendants after Adam. And after the fall of man, you didn't become just a sinner. You, you, just, you became sin incarnate. You're not a child of God. Yes, you're made in his image, but you're not a child of God. You're only a child of God if you're born again. See, God loves you so much, but he hates sin. And by nature, you are sin. You're not just naughty by nature, you are sin. It's sin incarnate. You are shaping in iniquity. Basically, you were born guilty. So you could say that you were born this way, like the singers say. <laughs> but see, here's the thing, you don't have to die in your transgressions. You can be spared from the wrath. If you put your faith in Christ and Christ alone in his sacrifice, you can receive the spirit of adoption and become a child of God. Romans 8, 17 says, and we are his children. Then we are his heirs also. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing in his spiritual blessing and inheritance. If indeed we share in his suffering so that we may also share in his glory. And here's the thing, you have to share in his suffering. And you will suffer in this world. If you live, if you live godly, if you live righteously, you will suffer. But you, but you have to make that decision. Will you choose to do this? It's a gift. Salvation is a gift. But, and God will not force you to be adopted. The Bible says the natural first, then the spiritual. You have to decide whether you want to be adopted or not. And you can make this decision today. The Bible says the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. If you've made that decision, if you truly counted the cost to be a disciple of Christ, and the cost is giving up, is putting to death your way of doing things, and thinking you're always right, and, and, and doing things your way, so you can become alive in Christ, that's the decision you must make. If you've decided to accept that, if you've counted the cost to be reviled for his name, to be persecuted for his name, because you'll be persecuted anyways, might as well be persecuted for righteous sake so you can be blessed, and the blessing is not a 10 bedroom house or, you know, a new car, you know, it's eternal life. It's being with the father, being in his presence. If you've, if you've counted the cost and you've decided you want to put your faith in alone in Christ Jesus, not your money, not your finances, not yourself, not your accolades. You can, you can accept this gift of salvation today. It was all, uh, redemption was already paid for over 2000 years ago. You just have to accept it. And, and if you ask, how do I accept it? How do I obtain this free gift? How do I have eternal life? Well, I, it's so simple. I invite you now, here's what you do. You just come before him and say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I ask you now, come into my life. Be my Lord, be my savior. God, I'm a wretch undone. I acknowledge my sin, it's ever before me. I can do nothing to save myself. I repent of my sins. I turn from my, my wicked ways. I put my faith in you. I confess with my mouth that you died over 2,000 years ago, and I believe in my heart that you rose three days later from the grave. And I thank you that I'm saved. I thank you that I'm born again. That your word says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'm calling because I know I can't save myself. I'm tired of going around in circles. I'm tired of doing things my way. God, my way isn't working. Lord, give me the mind of Christ. And I know I can only receive the mind of Christ by accepting that sacrifice you made. And I thank you that your word says, whoever is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things are made new. I thank you that I'm now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that I accept this gift, this free gift, by grace through faith that I'm saved. And forsaking all, I trust him. That is what faith is. I'm putting my faith in you. And I've made the decision. For you, I live and for you, I die. And I renounce Satan. I do not serve you anymore. I don't do what I used to do. I don't act how I used to act. I put all my faith in you. I put all my trust, abiding trust in you. And I thank you that I'm a Christian. I thank you that I'm born again because I truly believe in my heart that you made that sacrifice and I confessed with my mouth. I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. I thank you that though I was red as scarlet, I made white as snow. 
that I'm no longer dead in my transgressions, but I'm alive in Christ. And I give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you said that prayer, that was just the first step. I invite you now to get into a Bible-believing church. Open your Bible. If you don't know where to start, start with the book of John. Be around people who will push you to the next level. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron and that we're studying to show ourselves approved Not to become approved, but just to show ourselves approved That now that we've been saved, good works will follow us. Our good works isn't what saves us, but now the works, they, they are a sign. They are a sign of conversion. They are a sign of regeneration. And I just want to encourage you that even that no matter who does you wrong, no matter who forsakes you for deciding to live for Christ and deciding to put your faith in Christ alone, know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Know that if you're, even if your mother and your father forsake you, the Lord will take you up. The Bible says he's with you always, even into the end of the age. That everything that's happened to you, know that was all for the furtherance of the gospel. That all things work together for the good for those that love him and, called, and are called according to his purpose. And know that not only are you are called, but you are chosen. Be encouraged. God bless. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.